All right, welcome back. Lesson six, comparing fractions using equivalent fractions. All right, so how do I compare these fractions? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work systematically, okay? And I am going to find the common denominators, but I'm going to do that by skip counting. So basically, I'm going to multiply this guy by 2. So 4, 8, and I'm going to just skip count to find the denominators here. 4, 8. 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. I'm going to do the same down here. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, okay, and just keep going. 49, 58. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. All right, now what I want you to do is you're going to skip count to find the numerators. And your top one, what would you skip count by? Threes, right? Because it's multiplied by two, right? So in the bottom, skip count by fives. So pause the video. This is already set up for you like, just like this on your worksheet. So just fill in the numerators and then come back when you're done. Okay. So filling in the numerators, I have six, nine, 12, uh, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. All right, stopping there. Now, if I'm looking at three quarters and, and I'm looking at five sevenths, okay, do you see a common denominator between the two? All right, hoping you saw this guy and this guy, right? And so I'm going to write 21 28 up here, and I'm going to write 20 28 down here. Okay, so now I can compare the two, and I know that 3 quarters is bigger than 5 7 Now, did this seem familiar to you, this process? There might be a way, a reason I teach things in a particular order, right? I'm hoping that this systematic working and finding the multiples of a number to find the common one reminds me you of finding the lowest common multiples. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so we are gonna do this again, but I am not going to make you find all the multiples of the number. You are going to find the lowest common multiples between these two denominators. So let's think about this. What is the lowest common multiple with four and 10? So 10 doesn't work. 20, I know that four can multiply to get 20 and so can 10. But what I'm going to ask you is, what do I need to multiply by four to get 20? And the answer to that, hopefully you came up with five, okay? And what do I need to multiply by 10 to get 20? And hopefully in your mind you said two. Okay, now if I'm multiplying the bottom by five here, I need to multiply the top by five here. So five times three is 15. And I'm going to multiply the top here by 2 because I bought, multiplied the bottom by 2. And that would be 14. Now I can directly compare. And I know that 15 twentieths is bigger. So I know that 3 fourths is bigger, is greater than 7 tenths. Okay. On your worksheet, you have this one here. So please use the lowest common multiple and find without having, because you can write it all out like this if you want. 
or you can figure out what the lowest common multiple is and you can do it that way as well. So decide how you want to do it and pause video. All right, so I decided that I was going to find the lowest common multiple and I can do that relatively easy because I know that tens always end in zero and I know that the only number that it's going to match with is 70 because no other number multiplied by seven is going to give it a number that ends in zero. All right, so that's 70. And so I know I'm multiplying here by 10 and I'm multiplying there by seven, which means I'm also multiplying here by 10 and here by seven. So the numerators get multiplied by the same thing as the denominators. So five times 10 is 50. And then I have seven times 10 is 70 and seven times seven is 49. Okay. Now I know that this 50 70 is a larger number. So I can directly compare the two and five sevenths is greater than seven tenths. Okay, so Pause the video and just work on that section and make sure you get it before coming on to this part. All right, what we're gonna do here, mm, wrong one. Okay, now we're looking at comparing mixed numbers and improper fractions using equivalent fractions. Now, there's two different ways we can do this. Okay, so first way, I take three and two sevenths and I change it into a mixed number, or sorry, an improper fraction. How do I do that? Well, what does the three mean? The three means I have three holes that are divided into seven pieces. What does this fraction mean? It means that I have an extra little bit right there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, there we go, right? And this would be shaded, and these would be eaten. They would still be divided up into seven pieces, right? Okay, so if I'm going to do this, I know that I can multiply three times seven, which is 21, and then I'm gonna add these last two pieces here. Okay, now why, do I, why can I do the three times seven? because that's seven and I have three groups of seven. So three times seven, right? So three times seven is 21 plus these extra two pieces. So that is 23 sevenths. And now I can compare it to 13 fourths. But first I need to find that common denominator. So I know that 28 is the common denominator because 28 times four, or sorry, four times seven is 28. So now I need to multiply the top and the bottom by this one by four, okay? And if I have 13 fours, I'm gonna multiply each of these by seven, okay? so. 3 times 4 is 12, right? And 4 times 20 is 80. And then I just add those back together using my mental math skills here, right? Over here, I'm going to go 7 times 3, I know is 21. And then 7 times 10 is 70. And so that's going to be 91. So now, if I directly compare these two numbers, I look at 92 over 28, and I have 91 over 28, so 92 over 28 is bigger, which means that 23 over 7, this number here, is bigger. All right. Okay. I'm just going to do the other side now, the other way. Okay. So if I have, I'm going to do a different color. If I have these two numbers, now I'm going to keep this one as is. And I'm gonna change 13 fourths into a mixed number. So we just do the opposite, 
okay? So for 13 divided by four is three, right? And then I have one remainder, which remains in the numerator, okay? Now, I'm going to look at three and one-fourths and three and two-sevenths. And I know if I were to draw this out correctly on a number line and measure this out evenly, I could directly compare. This isn't going to be perfect. Oh, this is not very good. But if you can measure it out, that would be better. But on a number line, if I was going to compare, okay, how far, whoops, how far away is okay so knowing that this is cut into much smaller pieces right then this one is definitely going to be smaller okay and you can check that by adding in a, a tape or doing it on a number line, but making sure you measure it out properly. Okay, so there are those problems on your worksheet, so make sure you work through those. If there's any misunderstandings, please come to our help session.